Hello there, this is the seventh and second to last in a series geared to help teach new players how to play Marvel Crisis Protocol quickly or to help veterans brush up on particular details of the game. This video is going to be dedicated to the types of attacks and how to resolve them in a game of Marvel Crisis Protocol. There are three types of attacks, a normal attack, a beam, and an area attack. You can find out what kind of attack a character has based on the range of the attack. If there is just a number, it will be a normal attack. If it is a beam attack, it will have a B followed by a number. And then similarly with an area attack, it will have an A followed by the number for the range. I'm going to start with how to go about making a normal attack because the area and beam attacks are very similar to a normal attack but with different targeting rules. An attack from a deep rules look has 14 steps with even more sub-steps thrown in for good measure. And while this may seem like a lot, it helps the rules be really tight and clean so that if you have a question about how or when an interaction is supposed to happen, you can usually figure it out all by yourself. If you are still in doubt, I highly recommend using the AMG Rules Forum where you can either search for your question to see if it has already been answered or ask it yourself. The last thing I will mention here is that anytime both players get a window to respond with reactive team tactic cards or superpowers, the attacker uses theirs and then the defender. So the steps are as follows. One, choose an attack you want to use and confirm the target is in range. Two, declare a target for the attack, then allow both players to resolve any effects they would like to. Three, the attacker pays for the attack. Four, the attacker forms their dice pool, so this would consist of the number of dice equal to the strength value of the attack, plus any additional effects. Five is the same for the defender, using their character's appropriate defensive stat and adding in any additional dice from effects. Step six, the attacker rolls in their dice, and then seven, the defender will roll in theirs. Eight is the resolving of criticals, where you will roll in one additional die for each crit in that initial roll. Step 9 is a bit of a big one as it is the modify dice step. First the players will take turns modifying any of their own dice and then after that both players have done that they will use any effects that can modify the opponent's roll. Uh, a quick side note worth mentioning is that you can modify or re-roll the same dice more than once as long as you have enough effects that provide a re-roll or modification. Then in step 10 you will calculate the successes. For each success the attacker has over the defender, the defender will suffer one damage. But before you deal that damage, step 11 will pop in the way to resolve any effects that happen before damage occurs. Step 12 is then applying the damage to a maximum of the defender's stamina value. Then the attack is resolved in step 13, with step 14 being where players will resolve any effects they have that happen after the attack is resolved. And again, any time players could trigger or apply effects, the attacker goes and then the defender. So let's talk beam and area attacks. If an attack is a beam 3, you will lay out the range 3 tool centered on your character's base like this. Then any other characters under the range tool are considered to be in range and hit by the attack. You will then resolve the 14 steps I just went over for each enemy character hit by the beam. Then after all of the attacks are resolved, all other allied characters that were under the range ruler will just suffer one damage. Area attacks are similar to a beam attack, but the attack will instead hit everyone within range of that area attack's given range. Now, be careful when resolving these multi-targeting attacks, because you do get to choose the order however you want. So avoiding targeting characters with a counter-strike is a big deal if you are low on health, since them dazing you mid-beam or area attack would stop any other attacks you had left to make. And with that, I'm probably way over time already, but the next video in the series will talk about line of sight and cover.